Hello, this is Ron Mertens from OLED Info, a web publication and service provider to the OLED industry. This presentation will provide an introduction to the OLED TV market. We'll start by explaining about the OLED display technology. We'll compare OLED with LCD TVs. We'll learn about LG's WRGB architecture. We'll look at the OLED TV market in 2015 with a special focus on LG and Samsung. Finally, we'll look at the different kinds of flexible OLED TVs, at quantum dot-based TVs, and try and see what the future holds for OLED TVs. An OLED is an organic light-emitting diode that is made from organic carbon-based materials that emit light when electricity is applied. OLED can be used to make both displays and white OLED lighting panels. In OLED displays, each pixel is made from small red, green, and blue sub-pixels, although some OLEDs use a white OLED emitter with color filters. An OLED lighting panel can be considered as a single white pixel OLED. Unlike LCDs, OLEDs do not require a backlighting unit. In fact, OLEDs has a very simple design, which means that they can be very thin and can be made flexible. OLED displays offer excellent image quality. In fact, these displays are the best displays ever produced in almost all image properties. OLEDs offer great contrast, which means that black pixels are truly black, a white color gamut, and very fast refresh rate. The viewing angles of OLEDs are very wide. In an OLED display, only lit pixels consume energy. A black pixel will not draw any power, and the brighter the image, the more power is consumed. This means that in some applications, power consumption is extremely low. For example, showing a clock on a mobile phone with a black background. OLEDs are a relatively new display technology, but already they are leading in some categories, such as mobile phones and wearables. For the wearable market, OLEDs are perfect. They offer a great viewing experience while being thinner and lighter than the competition. Flexible displays enable new form factors, and the power consumption can be good if the user interface is right. OLED TVs have several advantages over LCD TVs. First of all, OLEDs feature a much higher contrast ratio. In LCDs, it is impossible to achieve a perfect black because of the backlighting unit that is always on. But in OLEDs, an off pixel is actually off. One of the major problems with LCDs is the slow refresh rate. OLEDs are about a thousand times faster than LCDs, and this is proving critical in some applications, such as virtual reality headsets. Another major advantage of OLED displays is the ultra-thin form factor and the possibility to deposit the OLEDs on flexible substrates, which makes it possible to create curved, flexible, bendable, and even rollable TVs. OLEDs feature very wide viewing angles and a large color gamut. The latest SED, those that feature quantum dots films, actually have a wider color gamut than the current OLED displays. But it is important to remember that OLED is new technology, and it will improve quickly in the next few years. LG says that they do expect OLEDs to reach the same color gamut as Quantum Dot TVs quite soon. OLEDs aren't perfect though, and LCDs have some advantages over the new technology. First of all, LCDs last longer. Most LED backlit LCDs have a lifetime rating of about 100,000 hours, while OLEDs are currently rated at about 30,000 hours, which is still enough for over 13 years of watching TV 6 hours a day. But OLEDs have a bigger problem. Because each color degrades differently, there may be burn-in burn issues, even after a short while. And this depends on the image on display. With an OLED TV, the power consumption depends on the image shown. The brighter the total image, the more power is used. For a totally white image, an LCD is more efficient than an OLED, while for a mostly black image, an OLED will be much more efficient. The biggest issue with OLED TVs at the moment is the high production cost. OLEDs are very difficult to produce, but the real reason is that the production capacity is still very limited compared to LCD production, and this makes every panel very expensive. LG Display managed to bring these prices down quite sharply in the past couple of years, and it is expected that production costs will keep falling. Some believe that new production processes, such as inkjet printing, may lead to low-cost OLEDs, which may even be cheaper to produce than LCDs, as an OLED panel contains less components than an LCD one. The classic OLED design uses a direct emission architecture, 
in which each pixel is made from three sub-pixels that emit red, green, and blue light. The advantages of a direct emission design is that it is very efficient, as all the light reaches the eye, and only the colors that need to be displayed are lit. The major disadvantage is that it requires very precise patterning of the sub-pixels. The alternative design uses white sub-pixels with color filters on top to create the colors. The popular design is called WRGB, as it uses four sub-pixels with red, green, and blue color filters. The last sub-pixel does not have a filter, and it emits a white light. It is used to efficiently boost the brightness. WRGB panels are less efficient than direct emission panels, as a large portion of the light is blocked by the filters. It also lowers the effective lifetime of the display, because the blue color, which has the lowest lifetime of all materials, is always driven. But WRGB panels have one big advantage. They are easier to deposit, and tiles can be scaled to larger substrates more easily. In fact, at least today, it's clear that LG Display managed to scale up and mass-produce large WRGB OLED panels and achieve high yields, while Samsung failed at their attempt in 2013 to do the same with direct emission panels. Currently, the only company that produces commercial OLED TV panels is LG Display. The company's main customer is LG Electronics, which is offering 11 OLED TV models, ranging from 55-inch to 77-inch, in both flat and curved versions. The lowest cost OLED on the market is LG 2013 55-inch curved Full HD model, which costs around $2,000 in the US. The flagship TV is the EG 9900, which is a 77-inch bendable 4K OLED TV. It will be released soon, and the price tag will probably be over $30,000. OLED TVs are still very expensive, but they are a lot cheaper than two years ago. In 2013, when LG launched the first 55-inch flat OLED TV, the price was set at $15,000. This same TV, in its curved version, now costs $2,000. In the green chart, you can see the price history of LG's 55-inch Full HD model. LG's basic OLED TV for 2015 is a 55-inch 4K TV, which costs $5,500. You can see the price of a similar LCD to the right. LG's 65-inch 4K OLED TV costs $9,000. 65-inch LCD costs up to $7,000. As you can see, OLEDs still carry a high premium of LCDs, but they are not prohibitively priced as it was just two years ago. Just like LG, in 2013, Samsung launched their first OLED TV. The S9C was a 55-inch Full HD curved direct emission OLED TV that launched for $10,000. The price was later reduced, but Samsung could not keep up with LG Display's WRGB production process, and Samsung decided to leave the OLED TV market. 
Samsung is currently focused on high-end LED backlit LCD panels that use quantum dot color enhancement films. Samsung is still developing OLED TVs, but the company needs to drastically improve yields and scalability before it re-enters the market. Samsung officials stated several times that cheap OLED TVs are not expected before 2017 or so. Some speculate that Samsung will adopt LG's WRGB technology, but it's more likely that the Korean giant will attempt to improve its direct emission production until it reaches high enough yields. One of the advantages of OLED technology is that it enables the production of flexible panels. A curved panel is not flat, but it cannot be bended or flexed by the user. Producers of both LCD and OLED panels are now promoting curved TVs as they offer a better image quality, although some users prefer the regular flat panels. One big disadvantage of curved TVs is that they are not very suitable for wall mounting. To solve this issue, companies are now developing bendable OLED TVs that can change from flat state to a curved state in a press of a button. This, for example, allows you to mount the TV on a wall and only curve it when needed. LG Electronics aim to release the world's first bendable TV later this year. The holy grail of TVs is a rollable OLED TV, which you can actually roll up like a projector screen. While this sounds like science fiction, LG Display has embarked on a project that aims to produce such panels by 2017, and they will be transparent too. The company is progressing towards that goal and have demonstrated an 18-inch rollable display back in 2014. Quantum dots are tiny semiconductor nanoparticles that feature both photoluminescence and electroluminescence. The current main display application of quantum dots is the QD film, which is used to enhance the color gamut of LED backlit LCDs. This is a relatively simple process step that does not add complexity to LCD production, and so several display makers already introduced QD enhanced LCDs to the market. The color gamut of QD TVs is actually larger than the color gamut of current OLEDs. OLED TVs still offer a better contrast and response rate, and a thinner design. Quantum dots can also be used to create emissive displays. In that case, the quantum dots are used in a similar way to emissive OLED materials. So-called QLED TVs are being researched and developed for many years, but without a major breakthrough, as there are still many technical challenges. Some reports say that Samsung is considering ditching OLED technology and basing the next generation emissive TVs on quantum dots. It's highly unlikely though, as it, as it is widely accepted that it will take at least four or five years before this technology can be commercialized. Currently, it seems that OLEDs haven't really entered the TV market for real, even though LG Display is fully committed to the new technology. OLED TV's major advantages currently include a superior image quality, thin design, bendable and flexible panels, and a fast refresh rate. But this doesn't seem to be enough. To really compete in the large TV market, OLEDs need to be a lot cheaper. While increasing the production capacity and improving the current evaporation process is a good way to lower production costs, it seems that to actually achieve a breakthrough in this area, a new process is required altogether. Some believe that the best route to low-cost OLED production lies in solution-based processing, mainly inkjet printing. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Goodbye.